Um, the third area I want to talk about very briefly is offshore West Africa. Uh, most deep water production from Africa to date has come from Nigeria and Angola, uh, which have a number of fields that were discovered uh, in the 1990s and are coming into production today. Uh, but lately, the focus has shifted north um, to Sierra Leone, uh, Ghana, Cote d'Ivoire, Liberia. Uh, there's a large offshore deep water uh, area uh, that, has been, uh, that has yielded a number of big discoveries. Uh, most recently, Anadarko, which is a U.S. company uh, that has a lot of assets offshore uh, Africa, uh, actually discovered a new field off the coast of Sierra Leone. Previously, they discovered a field off the coast of Ghana. And they actually feel that this is a, a, a trend, a, a continuous trend. Uh, in other words, there's probably oil located all along this area. And a number of companies hold uh, uh, reserves uh, uh, or acreage positions in this area. And it looks very prospective uh, for potentially some big, high-impact uh, types of fields along the lines of what you see in the other legs of the Golden Triangle, which is Brazil and the United States. So how do we play this? Well, there are a number of different ways to play uh, the Golden Deepwater Triangle. Uh, one is obviously the, the firms that are producing in these fields. Now typically I would tend to focus more on the companies uh, that are smaller independent type producers. Uh, the problem with owning a company like BP as a play on deep water is that although BP is a fine company, uh, the largest producer in the deep water gulf, uh, they also have a number of other assets, refining, assets all over the world, it's not really a pure play. But if you look at some of the independent producers that are operating in places like offshore Africa uh, or a national oil company like a Petrobras, uh, which is operating offshore in Brazil, and that's really the main play that they have is deep water, uh, that's really what you want, the pure plays there. Other ways to play it, deep water equipment and services companies. Uh, drilling a deep water well, as I mentioned, is technically very, very complex. The harder a well is to drill, the more you have to buy uh, uh, services from these big oil services companies. Companies like Schlumberger, Weatherford, uh, Halliburton, etc. Uh, those are all uh, big plays on deep water, seeing a lot of spending growth from deep water. Other things to consider, subsea equipment. Uh, when you produce a deep water well, uh, most of the equipment is actually located directly on the sea floor. Much more complex, there are a number of producers out there, a very high margin business for them. Uh, another thing to consider, the piping, the oil country tubular goods that are used uh, in the drilling and, uh, and completion of these wells. Obviously, uh, at that depth, uh, when you're talking about drilling a deep water well that then extends, you know, 30-some thousand feet below the seafloor, uh, you're talking about extremes of temperature and pressure. Uh, sometimes the oil that's being produced can be at 300 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 149 degrees Celsius. Now, when that hot oil comes through a pipe, and then hits the water, uh, the pipelines that are running through water at the bottom of the ocean uh, where temperatures are freezing or below or close to it, uh, obviously uh, that, that oil is going to very quickly cool and that can cause problems in well, uh, in well clogging. So it's very complicated to actually uh, keep the oil moving and handle that temperature. Uh, it also wreaks havoc on the, uh, the piping. Obviously, you know, when you have uh, even steel, uh, when it's heated up, it becomes more, it becomes more malleable. Uh, easier to bend, break, etc. Uh, the other thing is obviously you can't use welded pipe. Uh, if you use welded pipe where at the depth of the, some of these wells that the, temp, the pressure is 10,000 pounds per square inch. Now let's put that into perspective. At atmospheric levels, uh, pressure is less than 15 pounds per square inch. So 10,000 pounds per square inch is an immense pressure. Uh, when you put that through a normal welded uh, pipe, it would obviously burst the seam. Uh, so they have to use very complicated alloys, very advanced alloys, space age type materials to make this all work. Uh, so it's testing the limits of what's technically possible. Obviously the companies that sell those advanced services and those advanced uh, types of equipment used to produce these fields are benefiting tremendously from this. This is an extremely high margin business and there's much less uh, uh, tech, um, competition rather uh, at the high uh, technology end uh, of these industries. So to summarize, uh, one of my favorite areas, one of my favorite ways to play uh, the oil industry longer term is to look at the Deepwater Golden Triangle. Focus on the producers that get a high percentage of their production from these deep water fields in those three areas I mentioned. Focus on the services companies that own the very advanced technology needed to produce those fields. And finally, focus on the equipment companies that make subsea equipment and the advanced type of equipment needed to complete those wells successfully. Thank you very much.